Hi, guys. Paul here. PA Brew News. Listen to the howling. And we're here to do a beer review. Because for some reason, my... Well, I won't say it's working. But my phone is somewhat functional. And actually, I got a chance to actually use it a little bit last night without too much difficulty. So, here we go. We're live. We're live. We're doing something that has a little bit of a backstory for me. This is best before uh, the December of 2019. So, obviously, this is, you know, past prime, which is fine. Uh, this is Duvel. A big, old bottle of Duvel for nine, $10. $10, but for the big bottle of Duvel... This is 8.5 alcohol by volume. The first time I had Duvel was when I was on my honeymoon. Ex-wife now, you know, sad story, blah, 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 you know, the details. But when I was at Chester's Beers of the World in Hamilton, Ontario. And then when I could find Duvel readily in my area, I would buy a bottle every year. Now, I haven't had a bottle of this in quite some time. I mean, quite, quite, quite some time. Hello, Brett. What's up? Brett says, well, don't be making any impressions now. No impressions. We're fine. We're good. And then it says, cheers from Brother Craig. And cheers back to you, Brother Craig. Hope you're doing okay, brother. Now, again, this is a Belgian golden ale bottle conditioned. I haven't had Duvel in such a long time. Stupid long time. I don't even know if I ever did Duvel on the channel. That's how long time ago I've had Duvel. So this is basically going to be a fresh melon beer review for me because I have no reminiscence of Duvel. When I was drinking Duvel, I was also drinking Satan and Lucifer, two other Belgian beers, crazy, like, you know, 11% or something like that, huge booze. and blah. But I loved that kind of stuff back then. And ding dong, sorry, Duvel, hashtag proper glassware, Joe. Proper glassware. And then uh, Brett comes in with saying, ha ha, I got the Chappelle hop to review Christmas time. Well, that'll be a fun Christmas time. And uh, yes, they do have some variants. Duvel also, uh, it, now correct me if I'm wrong, because I, be, I could be wrong about this, but I believe um, Omagong from Cooperstown, New York, is also owned partially by Duvel now. They're in that Duvel family now. So, uh, and so I'm, I'm assuming Duvel has their, their tentacles branching into a couple different ponds, if you will. And I believe Omegong from uh, Cooperstown, New York, is one of those subsidiaries now by Duvel. Now, I don't know, I don't know too much about Duvel. I don't know too much about their back history, uh, their ownership history. I don't know. I just, it's been a long time. I figured, you know what? Let's get a bottle of fucking Duvel. I have the glassware. Let's make it happen. So, as I said, 8.5 alcohol by volume. Hopefully, please don't blow up everywhere. It's not blowing up everywhere. I'm already happy. Now, this is going to be Dirty Glass Mafia. I'm just letting you know, Joe's going to get all worked up. Label out, folks. Get it into the glass. Look at that. Actually, not too bad on Dirty Glass Mafia. Look at that. Straw, I'm sorry. Right now it's crystal clear. Now that'll change as the, the, the further we go down here. Crystal clear straw, a beautiful tornado of effervescent carbonation from the pinnacle of the glass rising up in a swirl to a big poofy old head. And as I said, it's been ages, 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 ages since I've had a, a Duvel. Um, so this is going to be a brandy new review for me. This is definitely not going to be like a a revisit and i don't correct me if i'm wrong but i don't even think i did do that on the channel before so this will be pretty 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 timey weirdy so there we go and then we'll read if there's anything on the bottle after the review as per normal because we go in blind so let's get an aroma cheers i get nettle i'm i'm, I'm breathing nettle in nettle Earthy, hit bit of hay. Nettle, like stinging nettle, 
a little hay, earthiness, that wheat tonality. A little bit of a wheat tonality. Stinging nettle, hay, earthiness. Maybe even a sweet, like a sweet biscuit almost, a very soft, subtle tonality of that underneath everything. Yes, but very floral, very on that kind of stinging nettle kind of uh, quality. Not herbaceous, not a herb, but it's more floral. So let's give a, what the hell was that on my foot? Fuck it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go back to the future. Let's relive the past. Long time. Cheers. The Howling from 1981. Not that far ago, long ago. That's when I was born. This is really easy drinking. Wow. No indication of 8.5% alcohol by volume. That is scary. You still get a hint of that soft, sweet, bready tonality, biscuit tonality. The hay, stinging nettle is there, soft, rising around the side of the palate, adding to it with a little bit of uh, earthiness, riding along. So it's that wheat straw tonality, mixing with a kind of a sweet, bready biscuit. And then on the sides of the palate, you have that kind of stinging nettle. Even a faint bit of lemongrass, I would say. Not full-on lemon, but almost a lemongrass tonality. Mixing in with that. Riding the sides of the palate down. Peppery earthiness. Pretty dude. It's pretty good. It's not, like, overwhelmingly, mind-blowingly good, if you know what I mean. Like, it's not bombastic. <laughs> it's not hitting. It's not blowing the sides of the palate off. And Thomas comes in with a... Hello, hi everyone. Thomas, I don't know if you checked, you caught me on the last room you, you popped into. Excuse me. I wanted to know how your homebrew that you were making on uh, Instagram turned out. So just shoot me a message on Instagram or whatever. I think I have you on uh, Facebook Messenger too. It's Paul's Paintings if I don't. But uh, yeah, let me know how your, your homebrew turned out, style and everything like that. Oh, he probably, probably made more since. So. It's pretty good. I wouldn't mind getting a bottle of Satan and Lucifer as well and do those over again too. Those were those say Lucifer was a small bottle, but the Satan Satan, I think it was Satan Red was a pretty big bottle. Uh pretty expensive. I was a hundred and hundred and fifteen dollars a case back in the day when I got it. Craig says the cheers to Thomas. Which is nice. I'm glad my phone's actually working today, but I have to get a new one. I'm cleaning all my stuff off this one, so I have to get a new phone. Um, throw some more in. Oh, whoa! Calm down. Calm down. Calm the fuck down. Well, you cannot just pour. Even if we, even when this breathes for a while, it is still volatile. So you can't just do that. But I did actually. I, I caught it just at the cusp. Of eruption the cusp of eruption just almost there and then your grandmother calls and you're like whoa sorry hello sorry it's one of those kind of deals the cusp of eruption because look at that rocky top for sure but what's in it so far I'm gonna let that die down is not too damn bad as I said I gave you pretty much all the uh, if we get more of the sedimentation in I have a feeling some of those Subtle tonalities are going to get blanketed it over with a little bit more of that kind of breadiness, bready tonalities, which I kind of expect. It's kind of atypical for these bottle conditioned beers. But for what I have just right now, especially these, these first couple uh, bits of it, I really, it's very nice. It's not mind blowing, mind boggling, anything like that. But for, for a nice Belgian gold nail, I still think it's nice. Let's say. 
brewed with the finest malts together with Zazaz and Styrian Golding Hops. They have to do refreshing and golden like a pilsner, but with a the flavor, depth, and complexity of an ale. This Belgian favorite has been brewed by four generations of the Morgat Mortgat family. Enjoyed chilled 40 to 50 degrees with uh, discerning friends or good looking strangers. Ah, have sex with people. They said drink this and have sex with people. I can get behind that. Imported by Duvel Morgat, uh, uh, LTD, Cooperstown, New York, which I think that makes uh, the connection with Omegong. And brewed and bottled by Duvel Morgat, 2870, Pours, Belgium. Pours, Belgium. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's a little blast for the past. Again, for me, I haven't had one this one in in very, 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 a very long time. And got a little carbonation still burping up that kind of a stinging nettle earthiness that it has. A little hazier. It's a bit thin, though. It is a light beer. It is on that low side of a medium body taper to the high side of a low body. You know what I mean? So it is, they say it's like a Pilsner, but with a little bit more complexity. And I can kind of see where they're coming from with that statement because it is it is very light. It's very drinkable. It's quenching. Even though it's 8.5, I will say, it doesn't taste like it's 8.5. It goes down like a dream. Uh, the only sad thing is, uh, uh, woo. The only sad thing is, it's not giving me that that kind of robust sensation of you're drinking this beer and this beer is the final beer. If you know what I'm trying to say, it's like, wow, okay, well, after this one, it, it's, it's bedtime. You know what I mean? The ABV might get me there in a bit, but the sensation of drinking this is not giving. It is, is this like, oh, no, this is just the, the start of the day. That kind of a sensation. So, but again, Chris Pilsner like, and I can I can understand that. That's that you know, comparison comment. Boy, the uh, the head just doesn't want to go away, does it? Boy, I wish I had this much head in my life. Anyway. I could suck my own dick, I would. Uh, let's see. Uh, there you go. Let's try to see if we can get this without going too crazy with what's already in here. Can we add a little bit more? Yeah, I think that's good. And I don't know if you can see it. Oop, there's about that much left. So probably yeah, only a four, three or four ounces left in the in the bottle. But now it's hazing up a little bit. Boy, that's a like okay, head, you can go down now at any point in time. Get your back, get your neck stretches going as you try to drink through this head. I guess they say you put your finger in it, oils from your finger will break it down. And absolutely not. <laughs> not even a little bit. The oils from my finger did not even try to break this head down. So that is a... Well, we're going to break that myth right now. Unless you have really dirty fingers. And I washed my hands, unfortunately, today. So my bad. Let's go again. Hmm. Yeah. You have lemongrass, stinging nettle, little earthiness, little peppery earthiness along the sides. You have a nice little bit of wheat tonality. You have that um, little hint of straw, and as well as that sweet, bready tonality. That's really nice. Um, I wouldn't say like saltine cracker. I would say like a sweet, bready biscuit kind of tonality, mixing it together real nice, blending all the way down. And of course, the further it goes down, the more that nice earthiness, kind of peppery earthiness kind of takes over. It's real smooth. It actually is rather clean, even though there is a little bit of that, that first initial hit kind of lingering on the palate. It drinks really well. Burps nice. Burps with that same kind of floral tonality. 
It is light. It is a light beer. This is a uh, drinking it during a movie and go get another one and drinking it during a movie and don't get another one and drink it during a movie and then go get another one and drink it during the movie and then you can't walk. It's one of those kind of deals. It drinks that well. It does. It really does. The head decided to go away. Maybe my finger did do the trick, but I just couldn't tell. Give it a good finger and it goes to sleep. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, 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 oh she's waking back up again. Ooh, rocky top. It's just like making a root beer float. Look at this. Ooh, okay. She's all in, and we left. A, oof, hell, the yeast cake at the bottom still. So that's that's good. That's what we want. And on the bottom there, like up to the light, this is a pretty clear beer. This is a nice haze, beautiful haze. Actually, for the uh, the amount of times we did this, the haze is real nice. No fish food, no chunks, no muss, no fuss. Just a huge fucking head. Look at that. But other than that, this was a, a you know. I haven't had this beer, and again, I don't want to repeat myself. I haven't had this beer in a long time. It was the first time I ever had it. it was during my honeymoon to my now, unfortunately, ex-wife uh, in Hamilton, Ontario. Beers, Chester's Beers of the World. It was very interesting. It was some, one of those beers that you know you always heard of. Beer here was a lot different than it is now. Um, very rare to get certain good beers. Uh, and then when I started finding Duval once a year on our honeymoon anniversary, I would buy one for us to drink. Uh, but then that kind of pittered out as well. Couldn't find it for a while. And then, obviously, things happen. So I haven't bought Duvel in years. Like 10 years almost. I would say about 10 years that I have had Duvel. And Duvel, Duvel, Duvel. Not Shelly Duvel. I think we'll say Duvel. Um, so excuse me for the pronunciation. But at the same time, I am thoroughly enjoying this. And I know it's a little bit past its prime, but for Belgian ales, that's kind of what you want, honestly. I mean, for me, uh, every time I pick up a, you know, a German or Belgian beer, it just seems like past its prime is exactly where you want it. <laughs> so, and like 10 bucks, 10 bucks. That sounds pricey a little bit if you really look at the rest of the spec, but 8.5. Really easy drinking, great tradition, great looking beer logo, bottle. Um, people are paying way more than that for just a regular IPA in a 16 ounce can, if you know what I mean, depending on what fucking brewery it's coming from. So, craft brewery can suck a dick. Um, yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that it was, uh, Duval was founded in 1871. And that's nothing to scuff off, you know what I mean? That's pretty, pretty good. I like it. And this is a 750, if anyone was wondering. At home. The people at home. Now, I have another one. I don't have it. They're up at the place that I was at. They actually have the Vest Mall Double. So I was thinking about getting the Vest Mall Double as well. And it's another 750 and doing a beer review on that one. I just didn't pick it up today. They have a couple bottles, so I kind of kind of feel that that West Mall Double is going to sit down, sit there for a while. So... Um, there's another one I'm kind of hit or miss on buying. Couldn't drink 10 of these. Yeah, you know, maybe not 10, but you could do about four. I bet we, if we sit down together, brother Craig and I, we could do four each without a problem, especially if you don't have to get up. If you don't have to get up and you're just pounding. And like, there's, we don't have to worry about the head problem and all that stuff like that. If we're just watching movies and drinking. I, I swear we could probably get through four of these without an issue, especially if someone was bringing snacks to us. Like, you know what I'm saying? But the other one is the, I have a glass for it, so I should probably do it because proper glass, rare ding ding, hashtag Joe, is Chimay Grand Reserve, which is, I don't know, like 9% or something like that. And I don't think I. Boy, I don't know if I ever did a Chimay on the channel either. So getting into these traditional styles, getting into these traditional breweries, seeing some of these Belgian ones, um, and just really kind of being blown away by some of them. The 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 the, the last one, the Saint um, Fuyen that I did is just stupid. This stupid kid. You know what I mean? Like it was just speechless kid. So 
which made me kind of let's get the Duval. Let's bring it back. I might do an Arval. I really, from my experience, and I, I'm the the beer review is going to be over here soon because the you know I'm babbling at this point in time. I don't really like Arval. From my experience, I know Lee loves it. I've just never really had a big uh, uh, love for Oval. I'll pick one up. I'll pick up the Oval. I'll pick up the Grand Reserve. Grand Reserve is like 14 bucks a bottle. That's pretty expensive. But I'll pick it up anyway. And uh, we'll do it on the channel. We'll see what's going on. We'll do some live stuff. We'll see what's happening. Um, I have to get a lineup. I want to get a lineup of some Trapels, though. Because I want to do a head-to-head Trapel showdown maybe michael and i can actually set a date aside where we're you know the kids are somewhere else or well my kids are okay but like his kids are a little younger where we can just sit down and we can do a trip hell showdown maybe blind even would be cool where we just do all the like three or four trapels blind see what happens see what goes down but i'll tell you what that uh <coughs> Excuse me. They all have age on them. I don't know about the other ones. We'll pick up like a St. Bernardus or whatever. But Maretsu's was probably one of my favorites. Uh, even though I, I really like Westmall, but then when I had that age Maretsu, I was like, oh, never mind. But that new one that I had, it's pretty goddamn good. So I think that'll be a, a very similar based tasting range, but at the same time, a very enjoyable tasting range. So, anyway, let's get back into this beer. The drinkability of a Pilsner with the complex taste of an ale. Kind of sounds like a little, kind of a shit description. Duval. Just saying. Hi, I'm Shelly Duval. Hi, I'm Shelly Duval. Hi, I'm Shelly Duval. If you haven't seen the Shelly Duval collage of hi i'm shelly duvall please do and i did a face swap with shelly duvall it's pretty fantastic yeah it's nice it's a nice beer and honestly now that the my voice is changing. <laughs> Maybe I'll hit puberty now. Yay, my dick will fall out. Whew, look at this um, With the sedimentation, I'm actually happy because this is actually giving a little bit more character to the beer. It's not so crisp and clean as it was before. Stinging nettle is still there. That brightness is kicked up. That wheat is kicked up a little bit, but it's not really covering anything. It's giving it a little bit more robust. It's giving you that little bit more of that body that you want, so it's not so thin. But all those nice peppery tones, stinging nettle, that lemongrass tonality, that wheat, that brightness, that little bit of sweet biscuit, they're kind of all there still. You know, it's not dying anything down. It's actually building things up, which is really rare and very nice. So these are very very distinct, refined flavors that Devel apparently has made, kind of culminated over the years. And it's pretty good because a lot of times you, you get these beautiful beers, um, Belgian beers to be example, that when you start drinking them, they have all these little tiny little nuances that are so fun and playful and you're picking them out you're, you're saying hello to them you're tickling their balls and all this stuff and then you get the yeast in and you're like oh where'd you go oh now i have three friends to play with and that's it and they're, they're all dicks you know what I mean? but you had 10 friends before and they were pretty interesting and then you get and then you only get three friends and they're kind of one-sided you know that kind of thing but with this everything's kind of getting better you know the more i drink it the the more the sedimentation hits the more abv hits me if you know what i mean uh, the better it is. So actually, it's not a bad little beer. Yeah, I mean, it's not a mind blower, but it's not a bad little beer. It's not a bad little beer there. And I, for nine bucks, you're you're still gonna pay like four dollars a bottle, 
for a small one, which is like 11, 2, 5, or 12. So it kind of pays you, kind of like the double from West Mall. It actually pays you to pay a little bit more and buy the bigger bottle. So uh, that's what you should do. Mm -hmm. So now the music has stopped, it's my cue to wrap it up. I would say that Duvel with a nice little drink, a nice little trip down memory lane. I can mem remember some things. And I would say, I think I'm going to give this a solid 8. Solid 8 out of 10 for Duvel. It's a nice little beer, a Belgian golden ale, bottle conditioned. And here is a nice little glass it goes in with the proper label. Proper house, proper glassware. Which is weird because I actually was a, uh, I was in Giant today, which is a food store around here, and they had a uh, Christmas ornaments up, and this is Pennsylvania, right? They had two different hockey ornaments up, which is weird. There was I can't remember what the fuck other team was. It wasn't Pennsylvania, so fuck off. And then the other one was the Buffalo Sabers hockey thing. I almost wanted to buy it and send it to Joe. There you go. There's your, for your Christmas tree, you throat cutting piece of shit. So there you go. So, but it was pretty interesting because I was like, why is the Buffalo Sabres hockey ornament in, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe like, you know, the penguins because it's Pennsylvania, I, whatever. I don't understand hockey or golf or football or any of those things. So anyway, this has been Paul Faber News. Thank you for joining me on this adventure back to the future and back from the past. Cheers. Bye-bye. Watch that finger.